today I'm here at Southern Manufacturing and I'm on the Herco stand with Phil and we're going to take a bit of a deep dive into this control and some of its new features. That's right. So, Phil, yeah. obviously, DXF, should we start there? Totally that, yeah, yeah it's fine. So, uh, usually on the control, as I say, standardly with the machine, it's just conversational machining in general. But we have a few options available. You can have DXFs brought to the machine or you can bring step files straight to the machine as well, yeah? Um, this particular one you can see just here, this is a step file that we've brought straight in. And the idea is you can program conversationally straight from that particular model, yeah? Um, so just to give you an example of basically how it works, I can treat a step file on the machine a little bit like a DXF as well. What I'll do, I'm just going to turn off this particular surface, and you can see the wireframe just there, yeah? So this is treating this a little bit like a DXF now. All I need to do, I want to bring in all of this particular uh, sort of surrounding area. What I'm going to do, I'm going to grab on the floor of that particular area, and I'm going to go, go around the outside, and we'll bring this particular one in, yeah? Now, these are the available blocks based on what I've chosen that I can bring in, yeah? So I'm going to grab on this particular block. It's a lines and arcs block. It's asking me for a Z start. I'm going to completely ignore that for the minute. I'm going to bring that one straight in. Now what this will allow me to do, I can now go ahead and you can see my direction of cut. So I want to climb mill around this, yeah? So I'm going to go ahead and bring that in. Now what that's done is brought in all of this particular block. And I, because I picked the floor of that particular area, it's gone ahead and brought the depth in. I'm going to go ahead and go a little bit deeper on that one, maybe 21 mil deep. And I'm going to grab myself a tool as well, maybe a, a 16 mil end mill. Now I'm going to be on the left hand side of the line, jump back into the program and I'll now go ahead and you can see this now, the tool will go around that particular part, yeah? So this is what DXF can do in some ways, yeah? Now how much easier does that make programming compared much, to much back easier, in the yeah. day where you were point to point to point, oh, or yes. yeah. even if you were programming that long hand. Totally that, exactly that. So we have our own conversational cycles, mill frames and mill circles and those sorts of things, but programming straight from a model or a DXF makes your life a hell of a lot easier, yeah? This is uh, actually a step file itself, but I treated that a little bit like a DXF. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna bring in the actual surfaces back into this. If I wanted to bring in all of that pocket, just to show you this, I can rotate the actual model so you can see the inside of there. If I wanted to bring in all of that particular pocket with that island in, all I need to do, I'll grab the floor of that pocket and I'll go ahead and I'll bring it in as a pocket boundary. Now it's asking me for a Z star, I'll pick the top of that particular block and I'll go ahead and I'll bring that in. The direction of cut will be fine for this, I'll go ahead and grab that. Now what that's done, as you can see, I've got a circular boundary and a hexagonal island inside of that. Just to show you what uh, this does for me, it's brought in both block two and block three just there automatically. So I don't have to create the separate places, it does the whole thing for you. All I need to do is jump into the boundary. It's already found the floor of that pocket because that's what I selected. I'll give myself a little bit of a safer entry. I'll grab myself a eight mil end mil. We'll grab that one. Now, we briefly spoke about in our last interview, we went through adapter path, zigzag and one way. All well, that lost is still available as well. Let's just quickly jump through that. So, yes. what do each options mean? So, we still have our classic sort of uh, racetrack style toolpath. That's outward and inward, yeah? So, you're more likely to do sort of tip cutting with that. And the trouble with those particular toolpaths is it over engages the tool in corners. It's still a bulletproof toolpath that works, but there are sort of drawbacks with it. You get slightly more wear on that particular toolpath. But people still use it in all kinds of ways. You're more likely to do pet depths with it and that sort the, of thing. Yeah, because yeah? the only problem I ever found with them is, is if you're doing a pocket, yes. it won't take your step over into consideration no, on the first pass. Exactly. That's why you're it more likely to Z-peck with yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. So obviously when you're doing pockets, yes. the adapter path is up to now only on the Herco control. So what does the adapter path do? So universally it's known as trichoidal milling, but we call it adapter path, yeah? There's adapter path zigzag and adapter path one way. So zigzag will do a climb and conventional cut in the same tool path and you get a step over percentage. And that step over is what sort of dictates how much of a swipe it's going to take out of the pocket for you, yeah? The other option is adapter path one way, and that's solely a climb milling tool path. So it's more of a circular tool path. It's only going to climb mill, and it will actually, as it comes back on itself, it will lift slightly so the bottom of the tool doesn't touch the floor of the pocket. So it just sort of cuts into the job in a circular way. Yeah? And I think one of the things we really need to stress on that point is yeah. as well, that's more like a cam system, it because is, it yeah. only lifts up yeah. maybe half a mil. Exactly. So you, you're not doing the whole Z up, 100 mil no, across. No, nothing like that. It keeps it down, so even it keeps your programming uh, your cycle time really quick as well. It does, it really does. One of the options that comes with this too, we have something called, if I bring in this, uh, for example, a zigzag one, we get access to something called rest machining. So 
rest machining allows you to lose a smaller tool to come in and pick out sort of edges where the sort of larger roughing tool couldn't get to. So in one block, you can actually do three tools, roughing, resting, and finishing. So that's three tools to allow you to do that in all one particular conversational cycle. So it's all there for you as well, to make stuff so a lot easier. Just off this control, if you've got a big pocket with, with small rads in, yes. you can rough it out with a bigger tool, because obviously yep. it's yep. faster. Yep. Using the rest machining, yep. come in and just nibble the corners yes, out. Yep and finish it yep. all off one thing, no cutting, exactly. pasting, it's all done on it's one. It's all done in one block. And in the same one you have on something called allowances, so in there you can say how much material you want left on after the roughing tool for the rest and the finishing tool to take away. Yeah, so it makes life a lot easier. Now, obviously we've gone through it a little bit, but yes. the solid model import. Yes. That, to me, is a game changer yeah. for a conversational control. So Definitely. how does that sort of work? So as you've just seen me bringing in, for example, I've just brought in that 8 mm mil with that particular pocket. What you're seeing here, this is that solid model import just here. So we brought in a step file. Just to show you, if I go ahead and draw this now, and what I will do is just take off that particular point. So from one particular thing, this is that particular step file, by the way. We're cutting around the outside, and just by picking the floor of that pocket, I'm not having to program that circle or the uh, hexagonal island in there. Ste uh, using solid model import allows you to bring in all of your features of your parts much easier. You're just literally tapping the feature and bringing it straight in. And also, if you're drilling, you can do drilling. Yes, so exactly you can that. do everything. Yep, now, obviously, we're stood in front of a three-axis VMC. We are, yep. But there's just one point I think we really need to get across is, yes. and that is how the five axis interprets a solid model input exactly. because so that is something it's a, a little bit special it really is yeah so with regards to that so one of the things that you'll do for example if you've ever used any um cad cam before is how you're going to figure out how to get that tool path on the next side of your part yeah so whether it's three plus two work or five sided machining shall we say um on with regards to the solid model import it allows me to go ahead and i will just quickly grab one just here for one second if i bring in this particular model So just here, see that? So we've got ourselves a five-sided cube just here, yeah? So what this allows me to do, all of these features, I can bring in straight from the actual model itself. Whether I work directly on the top of the job or whether I go ahead and pick the side of that pocket just there, the machine will automatically calculate what we call a transform plane. All a transform plane is, is figuring out how the tool's going to get itself onto that side of the part. So it makes life a hell of a lot easier when you use the solid model input. And there's, there's literally it makes human error because let's be honest the machine's not gonna gonna crash itself it's no. always whoever's stood in yeah, front of it. We never want to admit it but yeah. <laughs> We've yeah. all been there um, but it just makes human error a lot less likely to happen. Yeah, whether you're using DXFs or solid models themselves it will make, it'll take that, that sort of error example away completely yeah which is going to take straight from the model. Now obviously we're at Southern Manufacturing today yes, but yep. if Anyway, if someone's seen on this video something they really like or, yep. or have more questions about, yep. Yep. can they come to your showroom and have demos and training on this? Totally that. In our current showroom in High Wycombe, we've got 12 machines already set up, ready to go. We're cutting steel on all of them, whether it's the mill you want to look at or a lathe. Uh, we've got three axis, five axis, four axis. We've even got robots set up as well, so automation is there too if you want to see any of that stuff too. Uh, we've got our brand new lathes in, so we've got our six axis lathes, our sub spindle y axis lathes are in as well. So anything you want to see at any point, feel free to give us a shout and we'll uh, organise a demo at High Wickham for you. So if you've seen anything on this control you think can be beneficial for you, then give the guys at High Wickham Herco a call and you might even get to talk to Phil.